Hey guys, it's Brian again in the lab at Drylam. We're looking at Fuji Plaza automatic paper laminators today, and the information in this video pertains to all models. The ALM3220, the ALM3222, and the ALM3230. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at some cutting problems that have been known to occur, and uh, some ways to deal with them. For those of you that aren't familiar with these models, they're automatic paper laminators. This particular one is model ALM3230. Here we see it with its operator side cover removed. What makes this an automatic laminator is that it feeds paper, laminates, cuts, trims, and stacks that paper all in one operation. So this significant reduction in labor, as opposed to a manual roll or pouch laminator, leaves the operator free to go do something more productive. This video doesn't attempt to address or solve all cutting issues or problems. What it does do, or attempt to do, is to shed some light on those cutting issues that involve poor or no travel of the blade sled with resulting cutter errors seen on the LCD screen. When experiencing cutting issues of any kind with these laminators, the servicer should first consider themselves at a diagnostic fork in the road, so to speak. The first thing we want to know is, are you seeing the words cutting error on the screen or not? If the operator or servicer is seeing and experiencing the words cutting error, this video should be of interest to you. Uh, if you're having other cutting issues without this particular error, uh, you'll find yourself on the other road, shall we say, and I have other information I'd like to provide. Let's look at more depth at a cutter unit to understand how it works. From the outside, we see a motor, a pulley, a metal wire and two covers on the front. I'll often refer to those covers as film guides. If we take the covers off, um, not to mention the pulley and the motor, we'll see a sled that slides along two round rails. The sled carries a rotary blade which moves from operator side to non-operator side of the laminator. Although they've been removed from my demonstrator here, there's a rotary blade on the sled that's pressed firmly against a counter blade attached to the frame. Now these two blades work like a pair of scissors to cut film and paper. Like any electromechanical device, there are several things that can generally go wrong with a cutter unit. We could have motor problems. Um, we could have problems with the wire that carries the sled. We could even have a problem with the two blades. But the point is here that when we have cutting errors, this tells us that the sled was not able to get from one side of the cutter unit to the other side within a one second programmed amount of time to do so. Reasons for that? Well, yes, the motor could have failed. And yes, the wire that carries the sled could have frayed and failed. But more typically, we find that it's a simple case of the two rails becoming clogged up and contaminated by the environment. This causes resistance to the movement of the sled. We look a little closer at the inside of the cutter and we see two electrical limit switches. The state of these two switches is read by the microprocessor in the laminator. Typically one switch will be closed at any given time as the sled rests on it. When a cut is initiated, the sled begins to move and that switch is opened. Both switches then remain open until the sled completes its travel and closes the switch on the opposite side. In this video, we're going to look very closely at the time interval of sled movement between switches. Here again is the Fuji Pla model ALM3230 with its side cover off, and this is my oscilloscope which will help with this demonstration. For these tests, I created a quick prototype of a three transistor AND gate. These two yellow wires connect to the main circuit board of the laminator, and the AND gate is monitoring the states of both of those limit switches in the cutter unit just like the microprocessor is. By the way, here's the AND gate after I finished it later and built it onto a circuit board and housed it in a project box. The red LED simply means the power is applied. The two white LEDs indicate the state of each of the two limit switches. In this case, they're both on, or high. And the green LED shows that a high signal is being outputted from the gate to, in this case, the oscilloscope. Uh, again, uh, one switch is usually closed at any given time. But when both switches are open, the sled is moving somewhere between the two switches. And we will be able to view that time that it takes the sled to get from one switch to the other on the oscilloscope. 
There's a manual cut switch here on the laminator. When I press this button, the cutter unit travels from one side to the other manually. When we zoom in on our oscilloscope and press the cut button, we will see the time interval as a high pulse on the screen. We can stop the oscilloscope and we can use the cursors feature to measure that time interval. I'm going to set the cursors to manual and I'm going to set cursor A to the rising edge of the signal waveform. And then I'm going to go to cursor B and I'm going to set the cursor to the falling edge of that signal and we can see that the time of that signal is 328 milliseconds. Now I'm going to put my finger on the pulley and apply some resistance as I again push the cut button. Listen. Did you hear the difference? First an efficient running cutter and then second dragged down by resistance? Let's measure that new time interval using the cursors and uh, we can now see that the cutter travel time is uh, about 910 milliseconds. That's almost a full second so we're very close to that program time limit. My experience is that I wouldn't have been able to manually slow it down any further without getting an error. So 330 milliseconds to 1000 milliseconds is the working range. And this is not impossible to achieve cutting any of the thicknesses of available film as long as you're cutting film only. But if you're trying to cut film and paper there are clearly limits to how thick the paper can be. Now I've tested this with all our available film thicknesses and uh, I'd like to show you the results of some cutting tests that I performed utilizing various thicknesses of paper and the four thicknesses of film available. Here in table one we see that it takes 348 milliseconds for an efficient cutter unit to simply move without cutting any paper or film. Uh, very similar to the time that we saw demonstrated here earlier. Now we also see the amount of time that it takes to cut through the four available thicknesses of film only. Now we're not cutting any paper here, so clearly the thicker the film, the more effort involved. Table 2 shows the time that it takes to cut very thin paper with the four film thicknesses. Now I didn't actually test 3 mil film here, hence no time entered, but it cut. Uh, actual testing of paper in 3 mil film wasn't performed until 120 pound cover stock where it continued to cut and you'll see that here in a bit. Now you can also see even an efficient running cutter unit cannot cut paper along with 10 mil film. So therefore when utilizing 10 mil film be certain to set the laminator to cut outside the paper area. Table 3 shows thicker paper yet. Again an efficient cutter unit can cut the three lighter films and 65 pound cover stock. Pretty much the same as table 4 with 90 pound cover. Um, clearly we can see that the cutter unit spends increasing amount of time and effort cutting the thicker papers and films. Yikes! 804 milliseconds. And that certainly approaches the limit. Table 5 shows 105 pound cover stock. Again, no problem for the three thinner, thinner films. But uh, you'll see that this is the end of the line for the 5 mil film. Table 6 indicates that 120 pound cover stock cannot be cut along with 5 mil film. And uh, again, it's the end of the line for the 3 mil film. Now our final Table 7 shows 3 mil film failing to be cut with the thickest paper. Uh, cutting 1.5 mil film with paper never proved to be a problem in my testing for an efficient cutter unit. Um, however, it should be noted that 746 milliseconds comes very close to the 1,000 millisecond program time limit. Um, not to mention those times in the 5 mil category. It should also be noted that these results were performed in my lab under optimum conditions and results are liable to vary in the field. To make the cutter unit out of the box efficient again, I'm going to show you how to do the clean, lube, and adjust procedure. Now we're going to start by removing the four screws here to take off the cutter cover. Uh, while you've got that off, have a look at the, at the wire inside the cutter unit and check for any fraying. Replace the wire if necessary. 
we're going to be working on these rails here to clean the gunk off of them that's uh, no doubt been building up from the environment over time. So use isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. 70% uh, is fine, 90% will also work. Use a microfiber cloth and clean off all the way around both rails. Uh, be very careful of those blades. They are sharp. Ask me how I know. And it looks like I'm taking about twice as long to do this as it would take. Um, again, check that wire. Be sure that wire is not frayed. If there's any fraying of the wire, it'll slow down the cutter. Triflow is a great lubricant. I really recommend it for more than just this application. Works great in door locks. Works great in VCRs on capstan motors. Put a drop on each uh, end of the two rails. Now don't use any more than this. Don't coat those rails with lubricant. Bring the sled back and forth a couple of times to distribute the lubricant. And now you're ready to put the cutter cover back on. All right, we've got our cutter unit reassembled now. It's been cleaned and lubed, and now we're ready to do the adjustment. We're ready to install the cutter back into the laminator so that we can do the adjustment portion of the procedure. Here we see a different model of laminator than what I was working on earlier. This is the model ALM3222. This is where we remove the cutter unit. And before we put the cutter unit back, uh, we want to be sure and inspect the cavity from where it came uh, to make sure there's no debris or loose uh, film or paper wrapped around the orange or black rollers. Here we see the trimmer cover upper flap and lower flap. We want to be sure that the upper flap is not turned around backwards before we insert the cutter unit. And there's the upper flap right there. We want to be sure that that flap is, is facing is facing this direction right here. And so both flaps form a V towards the back of the cutter unit. And then I always close that trimmer cover, uh, just so I don't forget to do that later. All right, here's our cutter unit that we just got done performing the clean and lube to. We're ready to slide that back into the operator side of the machine. When you get about 90% of the way in, uh, you want to be sure and plug in the six-wire plug. And note that it only goes together in one direction. It's polarized. And then we can kind of jostle the cutter a little bit and slide it into place. We're going to attach four screws, one on each side. I'm sorry, two on each side. All right, this is back together. We've got our cutter unit in, four screws set, the six wire plug connected. We can turn on the laminator. Now we're gonna spin the laminator around now to work on the non-operator side. And this is where we're going to do the adjustment part of our procedure. Loosen the set screw on the back of the pulley with a Phillips screwdriver. Just loosen that a couple of turns. Now, manually push the cut button and listen to the sound of the motor. Let's uh, zoom into the audio for the remainder of this adjustment. Okay, we hear the cutter run and then we hear the two motors run as well. Particularly the trimmer motor. We, we want to listen to that sound. We want to get kind of used to the way that that sound is. Alright. Now we're going to go here to the adjustment pulley and we're going to loosen the 3 millimeter hex screw and we're going to take that down, what did I do, two turns there, maybe three. I hear how, fast, how much faster that cutter motor is running? Alright, let's go a little bit looser. Let's go another revolution. 
Let's listen again. All right, now we hear the wire slipping on the motor pulley. Okay, we can't go that loose. We're getting a cutter error. That's why it's, we're getting that beeping, and we can't go that loose. So we're going to tighten it back up that one turn that I did there at the end. All right, and let's listen to the cutter again. That sounds really good. So much more efficient than the way it was. Now, I'm going to put, just because of experience and, and history and knowledge on this, I'm going to put another half a turn tighter on that screw. It's running extremely efficiently. Well, now that we've achieved the correct wire tension, we can tighten the set screw. Well, I hope that I've been able to demonstrate that the clean lube and adjust is so important not only when you're trying to cut 10 mil film, but for all films and, all, and for efficient cutting through all paper stocks and all film thicknesses that the laminators respect for. I hope this video was as, as enjoyable for you as it was educational. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to message me and I'll do my best to reply.